Hey everyone, this is Anthony from thedistro.com and today I'm going to be introducing you to Linux commands. So right now I'm in my basic setup. I have Ubuntu 10.10 running in a virtual machine. And I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to go to Applications, Accessories, and Terminal. So first, this part right here, this is the distro, that's my username. What I'm logged in to the system as this at symbol and then there's the distro dash virtual box that is my computer's host name then we have colon and then this tilde and a dollar sign this tilde right here that's my current directory in Linux the tilde represents your home directory and this dollar sign means that I'm an unprivileged user so before we jump into this I just want to mention that Linux is case sensitive if you put a capital A and a lowercase a, it's going to make a difference. So you just want to keep that in mind. So now I'm going to show you some basic commands. Now the first command I'm going to show you is the date command. And all that does is displays today's date. So you go inside a terminal and we can type date and press enter. And there you have it. Today's date and the time. A similar command is the cal command. This will print a calendar and highlight today's date. Some commands allow you to specify options. So say I wanted to display not just a calendar of the month but a calendar of the entire year. I can type cal space dash lowercase y and hit enter and it will display the entire 2011 year. Now a very useful command is clear. So I'm just going to type clear which will clear the screen. Now a very helpful command is the man command. This will display online documentation for different commands. So I'm going to type man space and then cal and this will display information on the cal command. Now it opens up and it tells us the name of the command, a quick synopsis, and a description. It also displays the different options that you can append to a command. So for example, if we type in cal, space, and dash 3, it should print the previous month, the current month, and the next month, all in one row, just as it says. Now you could scroll down this page, and to get out of it, you can just hit the Q key on your keyboard. Now let's try it. Cal, space, dash 3, and there you have it, March, April, and May. Now say I want to use more than one command on a single line. I can do that by putting a semicolon after each command. So an example would be, I can display the date with the semicolon and then type cal. And it'll display the current date at the top and it'll display the calendar. Likewise if I wanted to display the calendar first and then the date, I can type cal, a semicolon, and then date. Now say you want to repeat a command that you previously typed, but you don't want to retype it. What you can do is use the up arrow on your keyboard, and you could keep using it, and it will display all the previous commands that you typed. Now that we got the basic syntax for commands, we're going to take a look at some commands that help us navigate our way through the file system. So the first command we're going to use is PWD, short for Print Working Directory. And this is going to display the path to the current directory that I'm in. If you want to list everything that the current directory contains, you're going to type ls and hit enter. And this will display the folders and the files inside of your current directory. ls has a bunch of options. One of them is the dash a option. This will display all of the files and folders, including hidden files and folders in your current directory. An easy way to create a directory is to use the mkdir command followed by the name of the directory you want to create. So I'm going to create one called animals. Now I could type ls again and now animals is displayed as a directory. You can go into the animals directory by typing cd which is short for change directory followed by the name of the directory that you want to go into. Now if I type ls, nothing is displayed. 
To go back to my home directory, I could just type CD and hit enter. And that will always take you back to your home directory no matter where you are in the Linux file system. Now to remove a directory, you can type rmdir followed by the name of the directory. And if I type ls again, animals no longer exist. Now a quick note is this command requires the directory that you're removing to be empty. Now we're going to go into the phone book directory, but before I do that, I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm going to type cd space phone book. So if I type ls, we'll see that nothing's in there. So now what we're going to do is create our first file, and we'll call it numbers. So a quick way to do this is to use the cat command, followed by the greater than sign, which is a redirectional operator and then the name of the file that we want to create. So we'll call this one numbers. Uh-oh, permission is denied. Reason being is because as a normal unprivileged user, I don't have rights to create a file. So what we're going to do, so we don't run into this problem, is we're actually going to change our status from an unprivileged user to a super user. And we can do that by typing sudo space dash s and hit enter. And this will ask us for our password. This is the password that we created when we set up our system. So I'm just going to type my password and you're not going to see anything and that's done for security. And then as you notice a couple things changed. In the beginning of this line instead of now saying the distro it says root meaning that I'm now logged in with root privileges. Another thing you're going to notice is instead of the dollar sign which signifies the unprivileged user we now have a pound sign which again signifies the privileged user. So now we can go ahead and create our file. And now we'll just start typing some of the things that we want our file to say. Pressing enter after each line. So I'm just going to enter a bunch of random numbers. Okay, that should do it. I'm going to put one more enter. And now to exit, I'm going to hold control and hit D on my keyboard. To see the file we just created, we'll type ls and now we can see that numbers file now if we'd like to view the contents of the numbers file we can type cat numbers and that'll print to the screen everything inside of that numbers file so I just cleared my screen and now we're going to talk about the copy command this is a very useful tool if I want to copy the file to a different directory or rename the file so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy of that file that we just created, numbers, and I'm going to give it a different name, and I'm going to call it phone numbers. So I'm going to type CP, followed by the name of the file that you want to copy, and now we're going to put the new name of the file that we want to copy it to. Phone numbers, we'll call it. And now if I type LS, we can see both of those files in there. And if I type cat phone number, it'll display the exact same information that was in our numbers file. So it just made a copy of that file and renamed it over. So after you make a copy of a file, you usually don't need the original file that you had. So a quick way to remove that file is to type rm command followed by the file that you want to remove. So we're going to type rm space numbers. And now if I type ls, that file is no longer there. If I want to remove a file, but I want it to ask me if I'm sure that I want to remove that file, we could type the rm command with the option dash i followed by the name of the file. So now we'll remove the phone number file and it'll ask me and what I could do is I could type either y or n for yes or no and I'll just type y and hit enter. I'll type ls and now there's nothing in that directory. Don't forget if you want to find a list of all the options that you can do with a command, 
type man, followed by the name of the command that you want to find out about, and we'll end there. To see a list of all the commands that were used during this video, I'll post it on my blog, thedistro.com. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.